nothing is impossible once upon a time we thought tuberculosis is incurable there is no no effective treatment it is no longer so the same with rheumatoid arthritis once upon a time we thought there is no effective treatment for rheumatoid arthritis and that every patient would end up with deformities i am sure all of you would accept it is no longer so we have well defined proven strategies like early demard use early diagnosis and now the availability of biology all this has changed the prognosis of rheumatoid arthritis patients in a big way most of our patients with rheumatoid arthritis are now in remission and have a much better quality of life the same is true for ankylosing spondylitis as well we have come a long way as far as ankylosing spondy spondylitis diagnosis treatment and prognosis is concerned first and foremost if we want our ankylosing spondylitis patients to do well we have to spot the disease as soon as possible the average delay in the diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis patients is anywhere between 5 to 8 years all over the world and this is the biggest hurdle in the timely treatment of these patients the best tool to diagnose as early is the recognition of inflammatory backache and other peripheral features of as what is inflammatory backache age at onset less than 40 years insidious onset and more than 3 months improvement with exercise no improvement with rest in fact it tends to be burst at night difficulty in turning in bed at night awakening early in the morning due to pain significant morning stiffness that improves with movement alternating buttock ache persistent rib cage pain other features that can help are uveitis dactylitis peripheral inflammatory arthritis mri has changed the way we diagnose as sacroiliitis can be picked up very early on mri and helps cut down on the diagnostic delay in fact we now define an early stage called non radiographic as this is a stage when one has sacroiliitis on mri but no changes on conventional x-ray in a young patient with backache and normal x-rays let us add a screening of sacroiliac joints with the mri of the lumbosacral spine so that we do not miss out on patients with early non radiographic as it is not unusual to encounter patients with unilateral sacroiliitis on mri this need not always mean tuberculosis as as patient can present with unilateral sacroiliitis if in doubt it is best to plan a ct guided biopsy rather than empiric treatment of tb as all of us know hla b27 alone does not mean the diagnosis of as the prevalence of hla b27 in general population is 8% while that of as is only 0.5% so if we have a patient with low back ache and presence of hla b27 let us take it to a logical diagnosis either with an x ray of pelvis with both hips and if the x ray is normal with an mri we should do the same thing also for the female patients of ankylosing spondylitis this will reduce the over diagnosis of as based only on b27 but also ensure an early definitive diagnosis for the patients with ankylosing spondylitis non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs or nsaids for short have a special role to play in ankylosing spondylitis they are the first line of treatment in ankylosing spondylitis patient they have a role that goes beyond their analgesic properties they have been shown to reduce inflammation and a few studies have shown that they also reduce the radiographic progression over time continuous nsaid therapy may be considered in ankylosing spondylitis patients with high inflammatory markers after thoroughly evaluating their long term risks and keeping them under continuous monitoring tnf blockers have changed the way we treat as and also the prognosis of as patients several studies starting in 2001 showed a dramatic response with these agents that was not seen with any other intervention till then tnf blockers lead to improvement in all articular manifestations dactylitis enthesitis extra articular manifestations C reactive protein levels and MRI detectable inflammation in the sacroiliac joints. However, TNF blockers by virtue of suppressing the immune system have their own risk. These patients require careful selection and monitoring. The role of exercises in AS cannot be overemphasized. Exercises in combination with NSAIDs, biologics when required, positive thinking can make a sea of difference to the patients. 
I have been practicing rheumatology for the past 25 years and have seen the branch evolve. Today we are much better off as compared to what we were 15 years back. Diagnosis as well as treatment has improved remarkably over these years. There is no reason why an ACE patient should not do well in today's world. Sadly, what has not changed is the mindset. As a medical community, we are late in picking up inflammatory backache, get a MRI and reach a diagnosis. Our patient counseling is still based on the age-old negativity associated with prognosis of AS. We need to change. We have the tools to diagnose AS early and also the tools to treat it effectively. Now we need to use them effectively and ensure a better life for these warriors. I am 32 years old and have been suffering from AS since 15 years. My diagnosis was quite delayed in spite of the severe pain. It took almost 8 years. In fact, in a way I was lucky when sent for my MRI. The doctor at the MRI center called me again for a fresh scan the next day as he spotted something in the SI joints. This led to me diagnosed with AS. Once diagnosed, I got to know from my doctors that there is no treatment for this and everybody eventually has bamboo spine and only thing that can delay is regular exercises. I was depressed and wanted to quit. Luckily, I happened to meet a rheumatologist and currently I am on a biologic treatment. My life has changed for the better. Firstly, I am pain free. Secondly, can contribute more at my workplace and be a top performer. Lastly, leading overall much better life. Despite being pain free now, there is a limitation due to deformity. This has impacted my marriage prospects. People in the office look at me and think that I am not capable of higher assignments. People at social gathering form opinions and pass judgments. One question keeps coming back to me. If there was not a delay of 8 years and few important decisions at an early stage and I would not have got the deformity and would have been saved from the associated social stigma. Let me summarize what we just heard. Let us change our mindset. AS can be effectively treated and our patients with AS can do well provided we are proactive. Early diagnosis is a must. Let us look for inflammatory backache and get a MRI of the sacroiliac joints done. In a patient, young patient in particular with low backache that is chronic, let us not forget to get a screening of the sacroiliac joints apart from the lumbosacral spine that we always do on an MRI. NSAIDs, exercises and biologics if required can control the AS activity and ensure flexibility and good quality of life to these patients in the long run. Now that we know that there is effective treatment for ankylosing spondylitis, let the patients know as well. This would be a big ray of hope for them in their otherwise painful life and ensure their participation in the treatment for a good long term outcome and prognosis.